I wouldn't kind of like say it's our most classic or whatever you want to fucking say. You know, I kind of, I can't, I can't think like that. But it is an album that represents a quite fraught but also a quite happy time in our lives. You know, we knew that we were making something special, and you don't get that feeling much sometimes. And sometimes, subsequently, you know, you, you do end up doing something special, but you don't feel it at that moment in time. But with, with the Bible, you know, we actually felt that it was important. We felt that everything was at stake and that we had, well, nothing to lose because we felt like we were abandoned that had failed somewhat at that point, you know, by not selling 27 million records and splitting up, splitting up and all that kind of bollocks. <laughs> and um, so kind of, it, it was a moment in time and obviously Richie was kind of like, you know, um, he w wasn't, um, he wasn't in such bad shape when we were making that record. He was at the calm before the storm. But like, we felt that things were changing. So like, everything is indelibly etched on our hearts and in our minds. Um, and in the music, you know, that you hear. So it's a time that I vividly remember, um, more so than any other time in the band, except for the very start, you know. It's, it's, it is just like indelibly etched on our, on our souls. So kind of like, in a sense, it, it, it is an album that I can still smell, I can still hear it, I can still see the places we record it in, um, and that makes it special in its own way, I think. Feel free to pass on this one, but you, you just mentioned Richie. Have you found yourself thinking about him a bit more? With the no, not at all. No, not at all. I think people just want us to kind of deal in Italian B-movie scripts, and they want us to be emotional, they want us to break down and cry, and they want us to say that it's too tough for us and it's brought too, too many bad memories back, and that's a pile of bollocks, or oh, I'm just too shallow. Perhaps I don't actually, I haven't got enough, enough depth to have that recall and catharsis, I'm not quite sure. But no, kind of like, you know, to actually play the songs has been a technical exercise, because it's quite a muso album on the sly. It's very interlocked with each other, and it's very fast, and I'm 45 years old, you know. So kind of like, to approach these shows when we did it, yeah, I looked at the technical aspect of it and I just really fucking enjoyed it. It was like a fight. It was just really good. Not that I can fight anymore because I'm too old. But kind of like, um, it's kind of, you know, it's that thing where people almost kind of, not saying you, but people almost willing, almost willing us to have emotions around, you know, going back to the Bible. It's slightly vicarious. It's not like that. M myself, Nick and Sean were in the studio. Uh, three, uh, no, was it last, last Thursday? Um, and we just, we played pretty much all of Everything Must Go in its entirety, just for a laugh, <laughs> because we had nothing else to do. And um, it was easy, it was just easy. It felt brilliant, it felt, like, it felt like you could just breathe and fly with it. So it's really interesting, you know, from the Holy Bible to Everything Must Go, they're both really enjoyable to play, but in completely different ways. The Holy Bible is, is kind of, you know, worms its way into you and gets its hooks into you, and it becomes a challenge to play it in the right manner. And then you, when you come to play Everything Must Go, it just feels like you know you've got wings and it's just easy and it breathes, and both those approaches are, are as valid as each other. And you know, that's kind of the beauty of being in our band, I suppose. It's kind of a bit of a schizophrenic beast, really.